Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. This is Kev with Kev's Can Cave. Figured I'd make a video on, on a hobby of mine that I've certainly enjoyed for the last 10 years or so. And that's uh, carving miniature morel mushrooms. But before we get started on that too much, I, I wanted to apologize. I actually uploaded this video yesterday to YouTube and started getting some likes on it, but I had to take it down because I just didn't look right to me. I I recorded it or videoed it, whatever you want to call it, in the wrong format. And it just didn't look right, and I didn't feel satisfied with it, so I took it down. But uh, I'm going to kind of do a little show and tell today of some pieces I've carved. And if... Uh, if this video gets any interest, then I'll actually show how I do it because it's a little bit of a process. But uh, again, I apologize for yesterday's video, but some of you might be wondering, well, how did you get into carving miniature morel mushrooms? Well, I'll tell you, uh, a friend of mine wanted me to carve him a morel mushroom walking stick, mushroom hunter up north. And uh, anyway, I did it. And I enjoyed it. It was pretty cool. I mean, it's I've seen some guys out there that can carve some serious mushrooms. And this is just my attempt to do it in a miniature mode. But uh, I started thinking how I could make them. A little quicker so I started making a miniature and uh, I was gonna put them on keychains give them away what have you and uh, I don't know what really made me do it there's a little guy hiding out right there but I started just trying to see how small I could carve them and as you can tell they're pretty tiny but the thing I like about it the most is, one, it don't take no wood to do it. Two, no matter what you do, you can make them curved, straight, fat, skinny. It don't matter because morel mushrooms in the wild kind of look like that anyway. They're just always weird shaped. I mean, yeah, you got your ones that are fairly uniform, but I don't think you can mess one up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, here's one I did. Just tried to make a little pyramid on the back with acorn caps. But that grass you see on here is just uh, grass I've seen when them guys do the model railroad layouts. But when I first started doing these, I thought, well, how can I make them, uh, how can I make them look small besides the fact they are small? And yeah, you can hold up a quarter or a dime, nickel, what have you, to do a size comparison. But I thought if I just used an acorn cap as a palette, if you will, then that'll be able to show the size of them. In a photograph. This one here I did with a turtle on him. I call him my little nosy turtle. I've only done a couple of them with turtles on them. But uh, I've sold a few of them. People like them. But I really haven't done too much with showing people my carvings. And very few people know I actually do them. But they're made out of oak and they're made out of maple. Different species of both. And I do a little bit of process to kind of toughen the wood up some. But uh came from a family of woodworkers, so messing around with wood's always been something we like doing. I never was very good at building things. My dad was a woodworker. 
as a hobbyist. And I'd say uh, of all my brothers, my little brother picked up the skill the most. And you can find him at Oddball Gallery here on YouTube. And he's actually had his pieces displayed in the Smithsonian out in D.C. Anyway, this is what I do. Thought it was kind of a funny story. My daughter was, uh, they were going to put a wood floor in their house and out shopping around for samples. And she kind of liked maple, hardwood maple floor. Anyway, when all said and done, she asked me if I wanted that sample of wood. And I said, yeah, I'll take it. And I, it was like probably 12 inches by 8 inches, whatever, you know, the store samples. And, uh, I got looking at it going like that piece of wood right there is enough wood to support this hobby for probably the rest of my life. It's just, <laughs> if you're looking for something to do that's relaxing, man, I wouldn't say it takes a whole lot of skill because I've seen some guys out there and I'm not trying to compare myself to anybody. There are some guys out there that are absolutely phenomenal when it comes to carving mushrooms. I mean, the detail is just incredible. And, I, and I'm just trying to do it in a miniature form. Try to doctor them up a little bit. I like taking uh, miniature pine cones and uh, taking the petals off of them. And as you can see, I'll apply it to another acorn, try to make a little flower out of it. I'll see if I can find another one here. There's a miniature acorn hanging out inside a, or excuse me, a miniature pine cone. I'll take them little petals off there. and little boogers are tiny. In other words, I try to just get creative with each piece. And that's the cool thing about it. They're all different in some way, shape, or form. See on the bottom, all I do is drill a little hole and stick her in there and glue it. But there's one of the little flower acorns I was telling you about. I've actually thought about painting the petals on them, but for now I just left them natural. Let me see what else we got in here. Hope these are all coming in okay for you. I've got to magnify it two and a half times just to try to get, show some kind of clarity to them. And I don't do, I don't know much about editing videos or anything. So what you see is what you get. I, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm in a, in a learning curve here, major learning curve. And uh, my kids are too old to, or they don't know much about it either, but. I could probably ask my granddaughter and she'd probably know more than me, but But like I said, I'd make one to make a video today show you all these Got quite a few of them You know and if it's something that you think is pretty cool, I'd definitely you'd make my day if you subscribed and liked and comment that seems to be a big thing going on here. I'm new here. And I'll definitely, if, if people like them, I'll definitely make some videos on me actually making them. But you've probably seen earlier in a video uh, that pencil with a thumbtack glued onto it where the eraser goes. That's just a little tool I use to touch them up. I actually carve them with a a Dremel and I make my own bits But like I said if you all Think they're pretty cool give them a like or a thumbs up I you don't know how much I appreciate that especially being new here because that seems to be how this platform runs But I never really showed these to too many people in fact guys I work with on the railroad I don't think there's a single one of them. No, I actually do them. But there's one of them uh, the petals off a miniature pine cone I took and applied to a 
acorn. I think I do need to paint them petals on them. They're kind of hard to see. Maybe paint them a light yellow or white or something. Let me see. Here's one. I like to take them also and put a little bend to them. That always kind of gives them a little more flair, but you can't mess them up. They very rarely break. And I've dropped these. These, these right here are about 10 years old. These are some of my oldest ones. But one thing you'll notice, they're all on acorns, or the caps. And uh, the reason I did it that way and what I ended up coming up with was they all fit inside a ring box. Yep, just like you go buy a ring at a jeweler. That way when I ship them, put a little piece of foam around them, whatever, and I've never had, never had anything break ever. They're just tough as can be. There's three little minis inside a little acorn, and they're just fun because each one of them is different. Not trying to duplicate nothing. Don't have to duplicate nothing. And as you see, you can get them carved and stockpile them. Carve a bunch of them, then start. Uh, and some of them are a little bit bigger than others. But you can get quite a bit of detail in them. Even for how tiny these, these things are. There's a little tool I made to, just kind of made this out of an old pencil to pull the eraser out, but I can kind of touch up the holes. Because there's, you know, it seems like every time you do something, you're never satisfied with it totally. And, and I'm not totally satisfied with these. I'm still striving to get them more realistic, but uh, it's just so hard to, because some of them are so tiny, as you can see here, that I'm still trying to figure out how to get the major detail in them. Them webs, cones, whatever you call them. But uh, anyway, I think I've rambled on long enough. I hope this works out. And uh, Like I said, I appreciate you subscribing, liking, commenting especially. Giving it a whirl, trying it. They're not hard. They're a lot of fun. Don't take no wood. Make your own bits. Can't beat that. Don't have to worry about sandpaper. Anyway, uh, definitely appreciate y'all taking a look at these. And if you like them, I'll give you more of them. We'll get into showing you how to do it. I'll figure out how to film them first of all. Like I said, these are in, in a light box under uh, two and a half times magnification. So, hope you can see the detail. We'll see. I'll make some more of these videos. Definitely appreciate it, folks. You all have a good one. And uh, if you like old motorcycles and old stuff in general, I'm just an old stuff kind of guy. That's kind of why I roll with the cave, the can cave, because I collect cans. I like old motorcycles. And uh, I like wood carving, so... Check me out, Kev's Can Cave. Appreciate it, folks. Thank you. Bye-bye.